Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final round coverage of the 2019 Ledgestone Insurance Open, brought to you by Discraft, the world leader in disc sports. I'm Brian Earhart, joined here by Kevin Jones. Kevin, final round here. What are your final thoughts on this temp course at Lake Eureka? I think this temp course can let anything happen on this final day. I think there's OB everywhere on every hole, and you are always looking to execute a tee shot. If the tee shot's not executed, you're going to be out of bounds and scrambling to save a par, if not a bogey. So lots of pressure on these guys right here. Final round, they're looking to secure some good cash. Um, hole one, first hole of the day, you're throwing about 350 feet right over the lake. If you hyzer out early, you're going to be going to a drop zone that's not very friendly. And if you flip it over and glide it down the hill too far, you will also be out of bounds and scrambling for a par. In our card today, we have Emerson Keith, Jeremy Colling, Garrett Gerthy, and Drew Gibson, all huge distance throwers. So we should see uh, some really interesting lines, and I'm assuming some more aggressive play today. I would expect so. They're all looking to make a move today. This is Emerson's recoil, I believe. This is a newer disc that I don't know much about, but it seems like it has a little bit of turn to it, but tons of glide. It's almost like it was designed for hole one, Eureka. That was, <laughs> that was a perfect a, shot. Yeah, totally agree. I think there's a there definitely is a left to right wind here, and the players are going to be playing that. They might even get to be more aggressive with their mm -hmm. tee shots. That left to right wind is going to help the disc get down and not get out of control. And, and I was going to say, you know, Garrett and Drew being on this card, these are two of some of the longest golf shot throwers in our sport. So. This could be huge. Yeah. And, and it he, is help it out wind. And he goes hyzer flip to turn with oh, something medium gosh. stability, and that could be circle two. That's circle two all day. Oh, just outside. What a shot. Especially to start out around at this course to have a jump putt for your birdie is not too shabby. Yeah, that's one of the amazing things about Garrett and Drew is the, their comfort in throwing such huge lines. Like Some people can get to where he got there, but Garrett did it. Pressure on, OB all around, and in the wind. It's, it's, it's pretty incredible. And we should expect Drew to follow suit here. And it looks like he's calling an audible. Uh, he threw a white disc yesterday. I'm assuming this is another destroyer, and he smoked this thing. They are throwing this so hard right now. They they don't care at all. They understand that their distance drives are so, so controlled with how much power they're putting on it. And there it is, dead center fairway, way up there looking at easy birdies. And Jeremy Colling, actually a world distance champion in 2012, so he's not, uh, not too shabby at throwing the disc far as well. Yeah, he's no noodle arm. And he goes flat to turn, throws it a little bit lower, which I actually like. He's letting that left to right wind help him out. And he's also smoked this thing. These we, guys are making this hole look like chump change over here. Yeah, we just saw a few incredible drives from pretty much everybody on the card. Emerson being the furthest away, and he's only about 120 feet out. Okay, so this, they're definitely feeling a very strong left to right wind here. You can see the spotter's flag blowing and these other banners. This is a very strong left to right. So honestly, if they put the disc on a hyzer, it might not even go left. It might even go right. Just kind of be, look at that right there. This is not easy. The wind is tearing him up right now. And especially the fact that they have to throw uphill into that crosswind. Drew going sidearm. I'm not sure about that. But it worked out really well. He kind of like played it up into the wind, letting the wind get under the disc and I guess slow it down ultimately. Good play by Garrett. It's an awesome upshot. Tap in a three. Emerson from about 27 feet. Not a terrible spot to be, but it is a tough putt right now with the wind. Ooh, he jammed that in there so hard. Luckily caught the dead center pole and stick in his birdie. This is a funky putt if you ask me. Okay, he As slipped it As you can in there. see, for sure. It's that downhill section of this hole, it's kind of got a weird wind pocket and and even though the wind might be coming off cross, it it might be doing something weird as you release the disc. As you can see Emerson Almost missed that putt from about 15. Drew was able to capitalize, and Double G has a nice stress-free birdie to start his round out. Yeah, being the first hole of the day, once you get in that little pocket and you have a 20-footer, it's very nerve-wracking, especially if you're putting for par. 
Um, it's it, it's nothing. There's nothing easy about that. These guys definitely, though, did make the hole look easy. We had three birdies and uh, a single par. We move into hole number two. Yeah. Again, like we've said in the past, we have OB all over the place on the right side, left side. And we're kind of bending around the corner to the right, par four. A lot of players attack this tee shot in a lot of different ways. Yeah, we see plenty of different shots here. Roller, sidearm, backhand mid-range, backhand fairway but it's really whatever gets you up there in the fairway and able to attack this very small green. Garrett is fading out a little bit left. This is not an ideal spot at all, if you ask me, but uh, it's, it's, there's, there's worse spots out there. He'll be able to scramble for a four, no problem. And Drew's been throwing this flippy rock. I think this is the same one he's been throwing all season, and you can tell how dialed he is. That flip point was so slow, and I guarantee you that's a lot flippier of a disc than we're realizing. It might be. I think these guys are dealing with a slight head, but mostly left to right wind here. As you can see with Colin going huge forehand, riding that crosswind and getting all the way around the corner, he should have another one of those short sidearms to the basket. Yeah, I'm glad we got to see both Coling and Emerson throw this. These guys both have world-class forehands, and I believe that if you have a world-class forehand here, it really can make this hole much easier. Absolutely. Garrett going rock. This is a super technical shot. Ooh. Catches that last tree at about 70 feet. Not a bad result at all. He'll probably be pitching up for his par with a tree in the way. This looks like a newer rock from Drew. That's high. I don't know about this, but it might be able to hyzer back in. Man, what a shot. Got a little squeaky, but definitely got through. And, and that right side, especially with that kind of big pine tree right by the basket, it makes it a lot tougher for the backhand to sneak through. And like you were saying earlier, I think the sidearm is definitely a good play. Well, the sidearm coming into the green is a good play. I also agree with that backhand, though. It's very safe. And if you hit the gap that Drew was going for, it filters so nicely. Now, is this... That is Emerson's Explorer, Opto X Explorer, so a very straight, um, straight fairway driver, but on a flick line, so that was a good shot. And Coling after a massive sidearm that carried in that left to right cross. I think that was an AVR X3. He popped up to the basket. He should have about 20 feet. That's awesome. Coling making this hole look very easy when it's not. This hole averaged 4.41. Lots of bogeys on this hole. Also, lots of scores much higher than bogey. Absolutely. Emerson into the headwind there, trying to glide it in, but a little over the basket. And again, like you had just said, you know, even taking a four in this hole is going to save you strokes on the field. Yeah, Brian, four on this hole is great. It's just the second hole of the round. I mean, it would be nice to score on it, but plenty of people are putting themselves behind after this hole. Absolutely. The really the real stretch from from hole 2 all the way to hole number 8 really uh, has been ruining a lot of players rounds this week if you look at the scoring spread. Um, so anyone that kind of makes it out alive from that stretch has a potential to shoot a really hot round. Yeah, very true. After two birdies and two pars, we're going to move right into hole number 3. I got to point out, Drew going backhand, backhand birdie is just so, so incredible. He has such a world-class backhand. It's, it's unbelievable. I believe he did that in our last round as well. Which he is, did. That's crazy to me. And everyone knows him really for his distance, but his flip-up game with a you know slower disc is fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. So here we go. Drew's definitely going to go down the middle. This gap is uh, pretty small and pretty punishing, too, if you catch the wrong side of a tree. And, man, I hate seeing it, but that's the danger of the gap. Jerm going forehand here. He's going to hit this gap, and as long as he hits that gap, he should be okay as long as he doesn't. Ooh. Now, Jerm hung that too wide. He hit the initial gap, but just unfortunately did not throw overstable enough or he flipped it up too much. I have seen Double G take this sneaky hyzer out multiple times on purpose. He was not trying to go up the gut. Yeah, that's dirty. That gives me goosebumps when he peers that, and he does, like, I'm telling you, 75% of the time. I love that play. Emerson taking kind of an unorthodox play, but sneaks through a couple trees and uh, 
I've He's seen gonna that. have a no-brainer. Have yeah. you? I've seen that um, not used, but I've seen it from the tee box, and I like it. I'm, I'm, that's cool to see from Emerson. I mean, he just parked it. We got two park jobs here. And Drew definitely with not a gimme approach here. No, he just jump putted a rock. That was cool. That was a good line. That's something I've been seeing a lot of players doing recently is jump putting the drivers in the mid ranges, and it actually makes sense. It does. They're definitely getting more speed and glide on them, and getting them to like go further. Like you know, he's throwing 120 foot jump putts, and usually if somebody exactly. like Drew can jump putt, he knows where it's going. Awesome birdie from Double G. Awesome birdie from Emerson. Two completely different unorthodox lines and they pay off this time which is kind of why i like the the design of hole three as short as it is players are playing it in so many different ways yes they are absolutely having to take uh having to make decisions and really play their game and we have two bogeys here and two birdies this hole's very dangerous but that's what happens right here hole three is dangerous and it can get you sometimes and I almost feel like hole four that we're going into is a bigger version of hole three. You're almost throwing an identical shot, especially if you're going up the gut. We're going to see a lot of players playing a uh, hyzer flip up the middle. We have been experiencing a uh, headwind coming up from this hole. So a lot of players trying to go left gap and trying to hyzer flip something down the hill. Yeah, the headwind is really making this hole very difficult. I would agree, though, it's very similar to hole three. You know, you got an OB path all along one side of the fairway that if you catch a tree or if you throw just the wrong stability you're going to be out of bounds and punished hardcore and that was a stable disc he just ripped i'm not quite sure what he just threw but he nailed that thing flat and he's about 35 from the basket yeah it was a really good line not the best result now he's got 35 feet downhill into a headwind but like that's awesome, though. Anything down the fairway here it will secure your three, and that's what you want. Emerson, what just Whoa, happened? Whoa, I thought <laughs> I just saw him hit a tree. Yeah, that was um really deceiving, at least. Might have been a hologram tree. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like he was going into that tree on the left side of the fairway, but he seemed to have either ticked it or missed it and got a good result. He's and now he's long. Long, putting uphill. Drew, that's more committed than Garrett. That's got some more speed on it. And it shows right there. And so. that's really the spot you want to be, shooting uphill at this basket. Yeah, it definitely is. It's much easier to be putting uphill on this elevated basket than down. Germ with, a, I would say, a golf shot. Nothing wrong with that. He hit the gap, and he got far enough down the fairway that he's going to secure a three as long as he just lays this up to the, to the mound. And taking a three on this hole is just fine. Yep, this is another hole on that two through eight stretch that averaged above par. So again, a three on the hole is going to save you strokes on the field in the long run. Um, and I'm sure Germ is very happy after getting uh, stuck in the jail. He had a nice little out for the for the three. And as you can see, this putt is not a gimme here from uh, from Emerson. Yeah, this is the opposite of a gimme. This is a sucker putt. Oh man. Mm. Luckily, he hit some brush, and he's not going to be that far away. Drew hoping to capitalize on this birdie opportunity. And that is a good birdie to get, especially with the wind whipping at you like that. Looked like he just ripped a overstable driver down the hill, potentially a firebird. And was oh, that was his rock, I think. Is that what it was? I think it was. That is a stable rock. Rock X3, possibly. It looked like that was what was in his hand. There's Emerson coming right back at it. Such a good comeback putter. He has a very good mental game. He's able to take a miss and a roll away and then just trust his stuff and knock it right in the middle. And I think as a spin putter, you really have to adopt that mindset. Yeah, you better have that mindset or you're going to be three putting <laughs> quite, quite a bit. Quite a bit. So Girthy there threw such a nice line, you know. He had such a good chance to have a birdie look, but unfortunately he ended up 35 short, and he decided to lay it up and take his three, take his medicine, and move on. Drew with the two. Well played. Now a word from our sponsors. Today we'll be talking about the Nuke. The Nuke is a wide-rimmed, fast, maximum distance driver when throwing on a wide open course with the Nuke, I'm using it to unleash maximum backhand distance potential. 
Due to its slim profile and wide rim, the Nuke also fits really well in the hand when throwing sidearms. If I'm looking to throw down some boom sauce, I'm going with the Nuke. You can pick one up at Discraft.com or your local disc golf retailer. Ah, yes, the infamous baseball field hole yet again. Another hole that averages uh, well over par, averaging a 3.71. Out of bounds in the baseball field, out of bounds beyond the baseball field. Uh, 476 foot par 3. And as you can see, the OB is funneling as we get closer to the basket. Um, as long as the wind's good, I think we had uh, either a head or a t uh, I believe we had like kind of a head crosswind on this hole that day. Actually, I'm thinking these guys are kind of facing a right to left tailwind. I see. Okay. Um, that's definitely, I was on the card right around these guys and we had right to left tail. So it comes a little bit more accessible. Let's see. Ah, and you are right. Drew definitely hung that wide, but it's getting oh, tons yeah. of penetration right to left. Short Maybe a little long. bit too much. I think he went long. What in the world? I, and that's pretty deceiving for me. Oh. you going high. X cow maybe. Looks good. Oh my. Wow. Was it good? And that's the crazy thing about this hole. The shots that actually end up getting within circle one look like they're going to go way too far left. You have to really commit to that hyzer angle. Yeah, any kind, like if you don't get everything on this hyzer, you'll easily end up short. Mm -hmm. But if you flip it up and let it ride straight, it's long. So, man, two incredible shots from Girthy and Emerson right there. They're going to love it. And these are 476 foot pure hyzers. Yeah, this is big time. And tons of pressure. Like, these guys know that if this shot lands out of bounds, hits that pole or something, wow. whatever. Like, that's incredible right there from Germ. But if it just doesn't land in bounds, you're going to be right where Drew is here. And this, this is, is not like a gimme. 350, 375 mm -hmm. with a tailwind. And you still have the funneling OB up to the basket. I mean, this is tour-style golf, you know, in a nutshell in, in my eyes. And... Looks like Drew uh, is going to put himself about 35 feet. But again, throwing a 476-foot hyzer with OB everywhere is, <laughs> is no joke. No, it's definitely not. Yeah, and so... Drew didn't like that one, and unfortunately he's going to have to take a five. Uh, Emerson not able to capitalize on that birdie putt, but again, a three is going to save you strokes in the field. Yeah, I'm sure he'll see the bright side there. Girthy, I'm guaranteeing that he's going to love this one right here. Wow. And that is a good birdie to get. Great putt from Garrett Girthy. Smooth hyzer. I believe it was an X-Cal. He usually, he would not need to throw a destroyer on this hole, I know. Oh, no. One of the longest throwers potentially in the history of our sport. Um, and really snagging a birdie on a hole where only 9% of the field birdied. So to have Germ and Double G getting birdies on that is fantastic, and I think it's going to help them make that move. Drew got a double bogey. He did. He took a five in that hole. But the funny thing is the hole does feel sometimes like a par four, where a lot of times if you're playing safe, you're going hyzer, hyzer to the basket. So after two birdies, a, a double, unfortunately, and a par, we're going to move into the hardest hole on the course. Yeah, this hole is the hardest on the course because... There's OB on both sides, and it's so tempting. It's so daunting. This hole, just it's just right there, you know? Um, but these guys are going to be facing a slight headwind, maybe a right to left. It's going to be very, very difficult to be in the right spot for a birdie, but if there's anybody that can do it, we've got three or four of them right here. I promise you that. And it looks like Double G is going a little bit safer on this one. Try, just trying to put a hyzer in bounds, and it looks like he does. Uh, fun fact about uh, this hole today, nobody birdied it, just to show you how tough the wind has been. And again, Germ going safe, Heiser. Did he, uh, yeah, he's stuck inbounds. Sometimes when they catch that wind, they can actually rise too high and go OB left. I saw Ricky do that in the final round, and it just happens too easy. Sometimes we get scared of that right side mm -hmm. because... That's where you really don't want to go. If you miss right, then you're in some big trouble. Drew playing it a little bit wider, but again, I don't think any of these guys are thinking birdie right now with how left they're putting those discs out. Yeah, I think they're just thinking inbounds, please, and then we'll get to the birdhouse, and then we'll throw an upshot and take a par. Exactly. 
Yeah, Emerson's going to be facing a slight headwind here. This shot's very difficult. It takes such a well-committed hyzer, which it looks like it does, but it needs to get down still. Like, good, good catchy grass. This shot is very touchy. And Germ playing kind of how I, I would expect him to play, but yeah, just that wind held that thing up way too long, had no chance of hyzering back. Of course, Drew will be... Is he running this? No, it looks like he's potentially throwing a Firebird. And he looks like he hit the stake, but unfortunately uh, has kicked out of bounds. And Double G might, might have an opportunity to go for this. Too much hyzer still. Such a tough shot. That's a great mistake, though, as far as mistakes come. He's not going to have to practically rethrow. He will move up the fairway and likely drop in a five. If you're going to miss, you'd much rather miss left on this hole for sure. And Jim oh, definitely throwing not a gimme of an approach, hopefully spiking in bounds, and it looks like he just sawed it off again. Yeah, it looked like a firebird from Jerm. Not a bad disc choice. He just gave it too much height there, left it up in the wind, and that will cost him. Emerson correcting off of that. He knows there's wind there, and he's going to throw that justice low and into the wind. Let it scoot up. Oh, baby. Wow. <laughs> Would have been a nice little par save for him. Yeah, tasty run from Drew Gibson. Garrett Gertie. Oh, man. Ooh, he saves his par. Are you kidding me? What a putt. He had to use the wind there. There's only one way to make it. That's to glide it in there. And on a hole that averaged 5.22 on a par 4 for the day, that is a fantastic par save. Yeah, you can call that a birdie. Ooh, a little sneaker for the double bogey from Germ. That's, that's a good way to recuperate right there from Germ. Very good putt for oh. his double bogey. Yeah, and as much as you know, the number might stink that he has to take on the hole, the fact that he hits a big putt going into the next one is some momentum for him. Yeah. And these hole averages are so important to know because it can really tell you what, what should your game plan be. Like, obviously, it's a par four, but getting a three on it just it sometimes doesn't make sense. Getting a four can still be your birdie, exactly. and that can still add up to whatever score you need for the tournament and for the round. And... That's what it's gonna do right there. And we're gonna see a few pars, but that hole is very, very hard and it can, can cost you an, an eight or nine, even if you get exactly. in some big trouble. Now that we got a couple of the tough holes out of the way, we have a birdie opportunity looking right here. And there's a nice uh, handsome man by the basket. Well, hello, Brian. A lot of players gonna go up the gut here. Double G throwing a beautiful mid-range shot. That's cool. So Double G uh, did a run up off of the pad on the right side in order to open up that gap. And he knows that when he does throw the disc normally, his back foot is off the ground because he's pushing off. So that is a legal throw. Emerson either. I'm not sure if he slipped that out of his hand or he just didn't commit to the angle, but unfortunately kicks an early tree. Yeah, he's throwing the explode. Oh, no. That's gone, likely forever, and I hope that wasn't that rock that he's been puring. I, I think it was, unfortunately. Yeah. Germ going hyzer flip forehand. Oh, my goodness. I'm not sure what disc that was, but that was beautiful. I know you love that, Brian. It's one of my favorite shots in the game. So, yeah, Emerson was throwing that Explorer X there. I think it's just... Um, it's definitely a very touchy disc, but he didn't quite commit to his tee shot, and that's going to cost him a birdie there. He lays up for what looks to be an easy par putt. Now, Drew, this is where you can get in trouble. He's a meter off the water now, but luckily his stance isn't too bad. Not the best upshot in the books, but at least he has a chance for his par. I think he can knock this down if he focuses. Whew. Snuck it in. Actually, it was for a bogey. He did go out of bounds on that tee shot. Oh, definitely. Double G hoping to capitalize on the bird. Double G feeling very comfortable oh, right yeah. now. You can tell in his putt, he's just very relaxed, letting it drop right in from the top of the basket. Oh, 
Oh, it looks like he kind of rushed that one a little bit. After a beautiful sidearm, German has kind of the same distance coming back at the basket. Ouch. Unfortunate. Yeah, Germ's putting style is definitely uh, quicker than normal. That's his routine. He'll usually give a little, a couple pumps, and then he'll look down, and right before he putts, he looks right back at the basket and is ready to commit. It's a pretty unique putting style. Emerson will be dropping in his three. He's not going to love it, but at least he's getting out of there with a three. And this was the easiest hole in the course. It was averaging... Uh, 0.31 strokes underneath par. So unfortunately, we had two players taking bogeys on it. Uh, Double G landing the only birdie on the card, and definitely uh, what you need to do moving into this next uh, next hole here. Yeah, definitely. So hole eight, second to last hole on the front nine, 793 feet. Objective number one, hit the gap, get safe. If you can do that, you're gonna pretty much, I would say, solidify a par for most high-level disc golfers. But um, if you don't hit the gap and you're OB, that's at least a five. Unless you're Reed Frescura, who actually forward it from the drop zone, which is where Garrett will be going, and I'm sure we'll see him put a really good run on it. That's just unfortunate. He did turn it over just too much, and that's the common mistake, I would say. Most people that miss the gap are gonna turn it over just a little bit too much and there's the adjustment from emerson that is a gorgeous tee shot and that's the thing i i think the fact that there is no layup opportunity off the tee here i think that is definitely the epitome of tour style golf and i think you know holes like this are fantastic it forces the pros to throw an extremely high level shot off the tee like this smash that drew just unleashed holy crumb <laughs> That was ginormous and an awesome shot from Drew, and he'll be in birdie position, but by no means a gimme. Oh, my goodness gracious. What? He got through it. That's really good. Objective completed. He's solidified himself. What I would say a four. He should lay Absolutely. up to the stump. But, um, yeah, that's a good break for Drew. And it looks German. like Double G is not trying too hard to get that birdie. He's not, he's not going – or the par – he threw a safe hyzer to lay up, and I think he's okay taking a bogey here. Yeah, I mean, the green, it just pinches down so tight there. It would take such a perfectly played that's gotta get distance down. shot. Yeah, okay. no problem there. It, it's usually pretty tough to sneak through there, OB, but it can definitely happen if you air it. That should still be okay. There is an OB Creek off to the right that you're not seeing right now. Um, and unfortunately, there's another OB Creek on the left side of the basket. It's uh, called the Peninsula Hole, and it actually sets up for a shot like this. Very high-level hyzer flip, and unfortunately, he was so close to getting it to crest over to the right and just didn't get enough of it. That's crazy, and Drew threw what, a really good shot there, just the tiniest amount didn't get it turned enough and that's going to cost him really the play is to play to the back right of the green that's where it opens up and there's more space right where girthy's going no problem right there um but yeah drew just a little bit off on his angle and that'll cost him both a stroke and a disc Yeah, this creek that you're seeing in the background, last year you could see the bottom of it. If there was a disc in it, you could see it no problem. Get it out with a stick. Looks like they actually spotted Drew's, which would be good. But this year, I'm telling you, you could do a dive into it. It's It just seems super deep. and With all the rain that we had this week, uh, I think just the water is so high. And um, the thing that I don't think a lot of people realize about a course like this is you know, even in practice rounds, you're losing some of your best discs in your bag, potentially that you've been throwing for months. And uh, it's challenging to play this course and have to throw such high level shot shapes with a disc you don't really quite know. Yeah, I mean, I could honestly say that it's likely the average player would probably lose about five discs this week. And I was seeing top caliber players losing five to ten yeah. and, and having to, you know, I saw I saw a player run up final round and have to go to the pro shop and buy a, buy a disc mid-round. Yeah, that's definitely not a surprise at all. This course can eat frisbees. And after a bogey and three pars, we move into the famous bridge hole. Uh, again, made a little bit easier this year for righties. Uh, just because of flooding, we weren't able to put the basket in the center position. So now uh, players are going to have to carry about 350 feet. 
and throw a hyzer out the gap and, and hopefully beat this crosswind that we had. Yeah, I think they're going to be facing maybe a right to left wind, but nothing too bad. Just making sure that you don't get the disc too crazy high. It's a good shot from Emerson. He played it real low, but the wind pushed it just in there. And what I've noticed also that is if you do play it too low and into the wall, you might be safe. It's probably about a 50% chance that you will be safe pushed up against the wall because the rope is on the outside of the wall. Oh, I like this line. If that crosswind takes it, it should be right oh, that's the basket. Part. Very good committed shot from Drew. And he even down-tempoed on that disc. He pushed it high and let the crosswind take it. That was an extremely confident shot. Should see the same from Germ. Oh, no. And he's not happy with that. Uh, I'm speechless. Germ has talked about this hole, though. It's very daunting for him specifically, and that's ah. what happens a lot of times. Sometimes certain holes out here can just get in your head. There's no doubt about oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Germ would hit that gap nine out of ten times. I would say. But in tournament, a hole like this can definitely uh, work you mentally for oh, sure. Oh, my goodness. It will make you think. I hope his disc is okay. <laughs> but I doubt it is. Jerem fighting the crossing with a forehand. He should have himself about a 25-footer. And Emerson, after a really low tee shot, got a little help from the wind and hoping to capitalize here. He is really good at those step putts. He's always right on the basket. It's a nice weapon to have. Unfortunately, couldn't stick that one. He'll be dropping in a par. Oh, he's hating life right now. He knew that was just a very good putt given the circumstances. That was a, a bogey putt right there. Gave it about all the chance he could. And to me, that was every bit of a ledge stone experience right there. <laughs> hitting, the, hitting, the, hitting the bridge and then just not capitalizing and taking a big number on a hole where the basket's staring right at you. Yep. Nice little birdies from, uh, it looks like uh, Double G tapped in his birdie. Drew as well, Drew parked it. Drew parked it. Jerm, unfortunately, with that double bogey moving into the next hole. We do have some birdieable holes coming up. Definitely, and that's gonna do it for our front nine. We're seeing a four under par, a one under par, and then a couple others struggling just slightly in the wind that they're faced with but uh we got a scoreable back nine just like you said and we're going to see him attack it and try to get a good placing for this tournament and we will see you soon for the back nine coverage make sure to subscribe to central coast disc golf and we will see you soon